question I have was maybe I'm thinking of the wrong law, but was Lot 35 in the last few years uh, amended, changed the, the size of that lot? Mm, I'm, I'm not aware if it, if it was. Can we come before the board? Um, I know that uh, I think it was in the, the late 80s. There was a package of amendments that came to the board on this subdivision. My understanding was most of them were just some uh, mostly realignment issues. There were some problems with property pins, and that that was the kind of thing that was adjusted. Um, but I don't have any specific information for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking the wrong lot. But uh, any other questions? Seeing, hearing none. Do I hear a motion? Flip a coin. Stephen? <coughs> uh, motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact, Gordon Ducker is requesting an amendment to the building envelope of the lot located at 8 Prout Place, map U53, lot 34C in the Elizabeth Farm subdivision, which requires review under section 16-2-5 of the subdivision ordinance. Number two, some of the plans in the subdivision set may include notes which conflict with a modified setback and could be confusing if not addressed. Number three, the application substantially complies with the standards of the subdivision ordinance and section 16-2-5. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Gordon Duckett for an amendment to the building envelope, the lot located at 8 Proud Place, map U53, lot 34C in the Elizabeth Farm subdivision be approved subject to the following condition. Number one, <clears throat> that a note be added to the plan which states that the size setback for this lot be reduced to 24 feet as depicted on this plan effective this date. It has moved, been moved. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as read and seconded, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you very Thank much. You. Next order of business, the Wild Rose Subdivision, request by Ragosa Corporation for minor subdivision review, wetlands alteration permit, public access waiver for the Wild Rose Path Subdivision, a five-lot subdivision located in the vicinity of Ocean House Road and Spurwink Avenue, application complete, completeness, section 16-2-3, section 19-3-9, and section 19-4-2B. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I am a leaseholder of a property that butts the church on the opposite side from this subdivision. And there's an apparent conflict. Okay. Um, um, I, 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 yes, Mr. Parker. The lineup begins. Um, I have a conflict as well. I, I work with Mr. Weinshank on a regular basis. The problem we're, we're approaching is, is I too also have an open con uh, contract with Mr. Weinshank and I have a, a pecuniary interest. Um, is it, we're dwindling down to less than a quorum. If it uh, pleases the chair, uh, I do lease this property, but I have no interest in what happens to the subdivision. I just want it known to the board that I live in the neighborhood. So you weren't necessarily asking to I wasn't excuse? necessarily asking okay. to be excused. If, if it pleases the board, I'll... So you lease a property that abuts... I this lease a property at 21 Ocean House Road, which abuts on the opposite side of the church. Anybody, any other board members have a I think if Mr. Carter feels he's not biased, I feel comfortable with that. Right. I am not biased. I have not been contacted by my property owner. Matter of fact, I have not been contacted by my landlord in a period of four years, nor have I spoken or seen him <laughs> to him in four years. You have a bias, so never mind. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we'll leave Mr. Carter on the board. Um, Mr. Parkhurst is excused. I also have a, a contract with Mr. Weinshek, who's not the owner of the Ragosa Corp, but uh, certainly involved in the application, and uh, we have to ask that I be excused. Uh, the, our co-chair, vice chair, uh, is not here tonight, so I'll appoint Judy Lardner to uh, chair the rest of this uh, item.
start, could you clarify, Maureen, now that there are, we are down to three voting members, is it true that any action we take will have to be unanimous? Yes. Okay. Um, if, I guess, a representative, the applicant, then could introduce the property and summarize what we're looking at here. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. My name is Tom Greer from Pinkham and Greer. We are the civil engineer on the project and uh, representing Lagoza Corporation this evening. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, briefly go over the, over the plan. I'm not sure exactly what the board has seen in the past. Um, the project is approximately four acres in size. It is on Ocean House Road next to the uh, church just uh, south of the uh, South Portland town line. Um, what we are proposing to put in is a five lot subdivision and what you see here on the overall plan in the shaded areas are the building envelopes of the five lots. The project is put together in um, such a fashion that the road is designed to service the five lots and we're asking for a private road. The width of the road has been reduced to 20 feet plus uh, five foot shoulders on each side. Um, we have taken also a reduction in the right of way to a 30 foot width with a hammerhead turnaround located at the end. Also shown on the site plan are three septic systems which will service these, these three lots. The two lots adjacent the uh, Ocean House Road will be served by the public sewer that is uh, located in Ocean House Road. The site will also have public water. Um, there's a fire hydrant located at the end of it for fire service. Um, the uh, major features of the site, this, this portion near uh, Ocean House Road is um, somewhat open. It's a re-emergent uh, field. The field is mostly meadow, mostly field with a few sparse trees in the middle of it. As you work your way back towards uh, um, the boundary on the site on this side, um, it gets a little thicker down in this area, and Trout Brook comes along the back side. So we're dealing with shoreland zoning as well. We have uh, designed the project to minimize wetland impact and keep it as far towards the front as possible. We, do, uh, we are asking for a wetland alteration permit. That alteration is not for working in the wetlands, but for discharging stormwater to the wetlands. So we've, we've pulled back and provided a 25-foot buffer from the wetland boundary to the building envelopes to, to minimize that impact. Um, the, um, some of the minor changes since um, it was submitted the first time, the drainage on site um, flows from this, this section of the road above it. There is a horse farm located in this area along the road to the back along a drainage easement and then down into the wetlands in this area. So we're proposing to use for the most part uh, surface water flow. There is a short culvert in here um, located in, um, on the left hand side of the road as you come in to convey the waste from the storm water. Um, overall in the drainage basin this map, this map may give you a little better insight into it. This is a, a blow-up of the USGS map highlighted here and that is the site itself. This is approximately four acres to give you some relationship to the overall drainage basin of some 600 acres. The site is located on, on Ocean House Road. There is a arch uh, culvert that goes underneath the road here. We are in the lower section of this drainage basin. We are not proposing to put in stormwater detention. The time that the peak flow from this upper portion of the, the basin gets here, the peak flow from the site is already gone. And I think that's the concept that we're looking at, and I think we've demonstrated that with the, with the uh, drainage calculation. Um, so overall, this particular site being located low in the drainage basin has no real impact on the, on the overall stormwater management of the basin. Um, we did, if you go through the notes, we did analyze it using a 84-inch diameter uh, circular pipe versus the pipe arch. Um, we did that in order to uh, um, make the calculations a little easier. It is also a conservative approach um, when it comes to um, low flows in the system. The, the pipe arch will actually pass more flow. 
Um, and I think we've pretty much demonstrated that based on our calculations, the flooding shown on the flood map is, is fairly accurate and we are outside of that flood hazard zone with the building envelopes. There are um, some comments and questions in the application on the fences and the um, associated plantings on those along the right-of-ways. The intent is to make a neighborhood that is very quaint, uh, one where you walk on the streets and uh, minimize the traffic. The developer would like to um, have uh, picket fences put in at the edge of the right-of-way and there will be some plantings along with those. Those are to be proposed, to be built as part of the home construction, not part of the utility and road construction portion of the project. I think in general that addresses most of the comments or at least some of the comments that were in the letter and an overview of the project. Okay, thank you Mr. Greer. Um, I'd like to remind the board that this right now is a review of completeness and not um, adequacy. And if there's no objection or if I could have consensus, it would be nice if Maureen could go through the checklist and if there are any issues you're concerned with, I think we could um, stop her as she does that. Starting with um, the, there are three types of review that this project is undergoing concurrently. That's minor subdivision review, a wetlands alteration permit, and a public access waiver. Because the road is private, none of the lots, uh, well, three of the lots would not have any frontage on an accepted town road, and that's where the public access waiver comes in. Um, two of those types of review, the minor subdivision review and the wetlands alteration permit, require a finding of completeness by the board. The public access waiver does not require that, but um, if there is an issue with that kind of information, it would probably be a good time to, to give the applicant that that information now, and that way, if, if, if they have to get further information, they do it as a full package. Um, but uh, starting with the minor subdivision completeness with 1A, this is not an item I'm identifying for completeness, but just uh, as notification uh, that this this is called the Wild Rose Path subdivision, and there may be some confusion with some other similarly named subdivisions that currently exist in town. Uh, under number four, uh, the town engineer has identi identified some concerns with the zoning districts, and uh, this this addresses uh, the division of the RA and the RC zone. It also is an issue with regards to, to soils reports because um, if you have a wetland soil, it automatically wraps something up into a wetland zone. Uh, that's another another issue he has addressed. Under number five, um, a location map. Uh, I, 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 I assume it's just an omission. There was originally a location map in the submission. Um, apparently, it just slipped out this last time. Yes, we removed it, and it, has, it is back on the plan now in this location. If you wanted a better copy, and we've, we've added that back on. Um, the under 6B, the boundary marker requirements, um, because a portion of the lot is, is on a curve, um, there's, there's some concerns with how many markers have to be installed. Um, although markers are a requirement of the subdivision ordinance, so uh, the board does have to be aware that that's something that's required and, and they're not currently proposed around the entire perimeter. Um, the town attorney has also made it clear that uh, with any any easement that's going to be donated to the town and, and the rear part is being talked about as a dedicated open space area, that there needs to be a meets and bounds description of, of any easement that's going to be donated to the town. I think the last time I talked with, with um, someone from your office, there was discussion about squaring off that land and in doing so, reducing the number of markers that would be needed. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of concerns. Along this boundary line, there are, uh, it follows a stone wall, and, and that's the, the marker. So there are several little small uh, deviations in the line along there that, that really the stone wall is the marker. We'd rather not have to put you know, multiple pins along that line. Um, in general, the lots themselves will have, have corner pins, and um, it's, this, it's this public access easement in here that what we're looking to do is to limit it to this area and through here as a as a um, an area on the plan. If it needs to be squared off, then we can we can square it off and set pins. We feel that once you get back into this area, that that really once you're outside of the building envelope, 
it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to us where the where the public move across the lot. And we can add meets and bounds to the uh, to the easements. In the past, we've shown them graphically on the side of the road. There's a meets and bounds description of the road line itself um, being parallel to it with an offset. That's usually been adequate. If you would like to have meets and bounds descriptions on those lines as well, I don't see that as a problem being added to the plan. It will get a little confusing. There will be a lot of numbers. Under um, items 11A and 12, again, these are additional details that have been requested by the town engineer. Uh, under 11A, uh, my, my assumption is, in reading it, was they just want additional information on how the, the homes would be hooked up to sewer and um, on 12 on the, the storm water and the, the surface drainage. I think there were some other questions he had. I think one of them included sizing of a culvert, uh, but those are more further, uh, excuse me, they're, they're further explained in his letter which is attached. <coughs> uh, going to item 13, um, this is the item of financial and technical capability. Uh, included in the package is um, a letter, a memorandum from the, the town manager. He has met with Peter Greenleaf and uh, Mr. Greenleaf has, has uh, been able to demonstrate to the town manager that he has the financial capability to complete the project. Uh, the one other concern was how Mr. Greenleaf related to the Ragosa Corporation, which is the applicant. It's really the applicant's financial capability that, that's reviewed. Um, since that time, included uh, with your, in this evening, you received a, a further certification from Mr. Greenleaf that he is the sole shareholder in the Ragosa Corporation. So that should complete the final link between financial capability and, and the applicant. Um, under 15, um, the fencing is, is becoming an issue. There's, there's been some discussion about whether this road, which is proposed, um, really would be more appropriately a, a public road uh, at a 50-foot right-of-way width rather than a 30-foot uh, private road with, with easements on either side. And there's been some discussion about the fencing, which if it was a public road, you wouldn't be able to put the fencing on the right-of-way. Um, and it, right now, there's nothing in, in the application that, that talks about how this fencing is actually going to be installed. Um, so that was that was identified by the town engineer. Um, and under 17, uh, I think that's just the item I raised earlier about the easements and that they have been submitted and, and the applicants working with, with our attorney to get the meets and bounds descriptions to get those those easements um, in a form that well that is acceptable and typical to what we usually accept. Um, and uh, finally, under the wetlands alteration permit, uh, there are some issues that have been related to the soils report. Um, again, identified by the town engineer. Um, you may want to refer to his letter, which is attached. Uh, he's much better explaining some of these things than I am. Um, but he had some concerns that um, related to B soils and C soils and that the map seems to have some discrepancies from the actual report. Is there any questions? Yes. No questions with regards to completeness. Um, I guess the only comments I would make is the only item obviously noted as being missing on the checklist is location map, and we do realize you had submitted that. Um, there are some items noted as being partially comp complete. Usually the way I read that is that there's been an attempt to address a particular issue. We um, call it complete, and then we deal with the adequacy of the submission. I would also treat the... Um, the request for a waiver on some of the lot markers in the same way that it's partially complete, and I don't think that any vote on completeness would reflect on your request for the waiver. Um, saying that, if there are no further questions or comments, could I have a motion from the board? for the following motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Agosa Corporation for minor subdivision review, a wetlands alteration permit and public access waiver for Wild Rose Path, a five-lot subdivision 
located in the vicinity of Ocean House Road and Spurlink Avenue be deemed complete. Do I hear a second? Any discussion on that? I have a minor question for the applicant. Is the intended name at this point of the subdivision Wild Rose or Wild Rose Path? Okay. Um, if I could ask you to consider Mr. Wilcox to amend that just to eliminate the path from the motion. Oh, yes, I'd like to modify the <laughs> previous motion. Mr. Carter, would you agree to that? Okay. All those in favor, please show by raising your right hand. All those opposed? The vote is 3 to 0, unanimous in favor of finding the application complete. Um, at this point, I'd like to ask Maureen, given that it is almost 9.30, would it be inappropriate for the board to do any further discussion? There's uh, no restriction from the board entering into discussion once the application is deemed complete. It, it's typically been the practice of the board that you, you don't discuss that much until after the public hearing, but there's absolutely no restriction against it. Uh, what are the wishes of the board? If we can, yes. we just soon get all the feedback that we can on the opinions of the board. Um, obviously, there are some items here that need to be addressed with the town engineer. If we can address the planning board's issues at the same time, that would be helpful. Um, would either of you ha um, like to discuss any issues of um, adequacy or technical merit before making another motion? Any questions or comments for the applicant? I had just a, a, there were just a couple of things which I would like to uh, uh, repeat some concerns also uh, about the fences on the street. And uh, one of the things which I noticed uh, in terms of the drainage patterns, that there is a 10-foot drainage easement on both sides yes. of the street. Uh, there is one point, however, where it uh, crosses over onto the butter's property. Or stop short of it, yeah. Or, well, it's depicted on the plans uh, as lapping over on, right, lapping across there. Well, we actually stopped here and then started again on the side. So it narrowed oh. slightly less than that. That's where we went to the, uh, to the pulvert under, on, under the road. Okay. That, that's an area where it was a little unclear to me whether the drainage swell was stopping. Yes, the drainage or, swell yeah, actually stops. Um, <coughs> if you look on the on the mm -hmm. uh, down here. What we have is a, uh, a culvert that picks it up at this location from down in here. It's pretty much a natural swale that comes down through there, and there's not a very big drainage area above it. And then we bring it to a culvert down through here. Um, that allowed us to get driveways off the end of the road and pick up the drainage and, and minimize the disturbance mm -hmm. of the Could, could you wall. address it at this point or, or next time if, after the public hearing uh, whether there is a potential for runoff sheeting across the pavement and across the hammerhead um, in that location? It goes in that direction. Yeah. yeah. And That's right. Just in terms of volume of flow. And okay. It's, it's uh, yeah. generally just what falls on the pavement itself, so it's a very small. Okay. Any other concerns, Mr. Wilcox? Uh, uh, apart from the uh, town engineer's concern about the paving itself, I'd say that was my, my chief concern within the town engineer's report. Okay, if I may, I'll add a couple of comments for you folks to look into before you come back before us. Um, I, I again have some concerns about the location of the fence and who is responsible for um, installing those um, just have a strong proposal when you come forth for the public and I'd like to know that you've talked to the town engineer some more perhaps or just have agreed to disagree. Mm -hmm. um, the town attorney has mentioned um, revisions that need to be made. A question I had about the easements is it's my understanding that the public access area is intended for the greater public and not just the lot owners. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. I did not see, although I have missed it, how the residents of Cape Elizabeth have the right to get to the public access easement because the roadway easement does not speak about pedestrian access over that to enjoy that area. 
And if I read it incorrectly, you can just point that out to okay. us next and time. And otherwise, the roof. we do have a pedestrian easement located off the end of the um, hammerhead that comes out along this boundary line. I noticed that, but I wasn't sure if the public actually had a legal right to traverse the road to get to down get there because okay. it talks right. about road maintenance and so okay. forth. Um, let's see. Um, I, I'd like to see more setback dimensions and so forth on the building envelopes. You locate them and you, you locate the building envelopes on here and you give some of the dimensions, but it would be nice if all of them were dimensioned. I think I'm speaking mainly of side yards, just so it's easier to know. In the yes, th these are minor things between the lots. Um, let's quickly look at this. I think also the public access easement deed speaks only with reference to lot five, whereas I think it should also refer to lot four because the public access area does traverse the back of both lots. Okay, yes, back in here. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. I, I guess a general question on the, the zone boundaries. Are the zone boundaries actually shown on the plans we have right now? Um, I, they were at one time on that one, but I don't believe they were taken off. Okay, um, those could be put back on. Yeah, Cause there, there is a resource protection two district also in the front of the property, isn't there? It looked like from the large scale zoning map I had. Yes, that's. Um, that's back to where the soils come into play. It's a, it's a resource protection district if you meet certain soils requirements. Okay. In other words, in, in the front of the lot does not. The front of the lot has soils that are not indicative of a wetland, whereas this piece of the, the parcel um, where, the, where we have edge of wetland does have soils that, that do meet the wetland requirements and that this portion of the lot would be the, the resource protection district. Okay. And a final thing, and I don't want to discuss it now, but it's a concern of mine, is the property abuts a, a working agricultural use, if you will, or stable use. Um, I'm always concerned with the coming to the nuisance cases where homeowners move into an existing use, and then despite law, they complain and the existing use can be shut down. Um, I would like both staff to research that and perhaps talk to the town attorney to see if that might be a problem, and if so, what mechanisms could be put in place to protect that existing use, if that's what we think is appropriate, and um, also your response to that issue. If uh, you know, I'm concerned if a home homeowner will move in and then complain about a manure pile if there's any close by. Um, aside from that, Maureen, is it appropriate? at this point that we, we would be considering a site walk? Mm -hmm. yes. Then perhaps we could have a motion um, with respect to scheduling a public hearing since that is required. And the previous motion was voted on, 3-0 approving completion. And now we're looking for a, um, I guess a tabling motion that might include the public hearing. Madam Chair, may I offer, Madam Chair, may I offer the following motion? Uh, be it ordered that the application of the Ragosa Corporation for minor subdivision review, a wetlands alteration permit, and a public access waiver for Wild Rose Path, a five division, five lot subdivision located in the vicinity of Ocean House Road and Spurlink Ave, be tabled for the regular May, further consideration at the regular May 18th, 1993 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be scheduled. Do I hear a second? Second. Only thing I would ask is a week. <laughs> yes. Did I say Patrick? Yes, you did. I have it crossed out here, too. Any further comment? All those in favor of the motion as read and amended, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, the vote is unanimous, 3 to 0. Then I guess we could look at scheduling a site walk on the property. Or any preferences? Um, the board usually schedules site walks for Saturday morning 
although at this time of year with the additional light you have considered holding them after in the in the in the late afternoon before it gets dark in the evening and it's it's a, it's it's at your preference when you would like to do it although having everyone here right now this would be a good time to try to schedule it any preferences on day Saturdays versus evening Saturday closer to lunchtime is better for me. <laughs> Usually we do it first thing in the morning. Um, or, or early, real early, 8 o'clock. Right? Mr. Connor? 8 o'clock Saturday would be best for me. Um, Maureen, uh, Saturday you might suggest. Oh, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> or the applicant, I, do, I don't know. Um, let's see, the next Saturday is <coughs> April 24th. Um, Saturday after that, I believe, is the first Saturday in May. Uh, preference on the part of the board? No. 24th? Do you want to put it a week ahead in case there are other members of the board that may want to attend? Okay. Um, so May 1st. May 1st. So that is, we are scheduling a site walk right now for Saturday, May 1st at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Is that agreeable That's to fine. you? Yeah. Okay, and will you notify the other board members? Thank you. Ocean House Road. We've usually parked in the church parking lot. Yeah. That's okay. been the easiest place to park. Okay. Any further comments on this? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Russell? Uh, is there any other business uh, to come before the uh, board this evening? No. I would uh, urge the planning board members to our next uh, workshop. Uh, stated when? First Tuesday in May, the 4th. Um, we're returning to the technical uh, amendments, one of our favorite chores, uh, technical amendments to ordinances. Uh, do we have any other business to become before the workshop? I'll be out of town. I'll be in uh, Washington. But, uh, I would expect everybody to be in attendance to cover those technical amendments. No other discussion? Do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Here a second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned.